Okay, hi everybody. My name's Stephen Preston. I work for a company called Autodesk. My presentation today is talking about some tools that you can use to quickly get started in 3D. Now, I wanted to make it clear from the outset that there is no coding at all in this presentation. So if you really like those semicolons, you probably want to go and find a different place to, different presentation this time around. What I want to do is to, first of all, persuade you that 3D on your web is really cool and that it's something that you want to do. Second thing I want to persuade you is that 3D on your website these days, as in last, last 18 months, is really, really easy and it's something that you can do. So let me show you some demos first of all to give you some ideas of what people are doing out there on the web. So these are all browser-based, no plugins, zero client, it's all, they're all based on WebGL. Um, this first demo here is by a company called Play Canvas, and I think I can probably expand the browser a little bit there. Okay, let's just get that running. Okay, get my bearings. So I'm in a room, hopefully that comes across, a little bit of light on a projector, but I can run around and this is a 3D environment, uh, so this, this product is, is written by something called Play Canvas, and I can run around in a room and I can find a door somewhere, there it goes, I can run through the door. You know this is a bit of a spooky demo because there's a swinging light bulb, um, you know I can kick those boxes around, go through this door, another swinging light bulb, we're getting close to the dangerous thing here. And oh my gosh, it's a giant man-eating plant. And, and this, is, this is just a walkthrough demo, so I can't kill the plant or get eaten by the plant. But it gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that you can do with 3D these, these days, purely in a browser. Um, you know, and I'm not suggesting that after 10 minutes of using, a, of using this tool, you'll be able to do this. But you know, perhaps it's something that you can aspire to. Here's another example. This is, again, Play Canvas. Play Canvas is a 3D gaming engine. People use it for advertisements. And this is an advertisement for the BMW i8. So I can, I can interact with this and change the color. I think I quite like the black. Uh, I can turn that around. And there's a little button here for me to interact with. I can go inside, take a look inside the cockpit, maybe change the colors a little bit, turn the steering wheel, go back outside. And, and suddenly I'm engaged, you know, I'm no longer just popping onto the site, oh yeah, you know, it's another bootstrap template, um, and popping off in a couple of minutes. Hopefully by doing this, I'm engaging the customer for 5, 10, 20 minutes on my website because, you know, at the moment, 3D is, is different, it's unusual. It's something that not many people do. Here's another example, another car one, I'm afraid. This is by a product called Clever, and if you've been shopping for a new car recently, you've probably seen this on a website. This presentation was written entirely without code. Um, so the idea is, you know, I, I can rotate the car, and there's these interactive buttons. So when I click on this, it adds an overlay, a kind of presentation layer. The same buttons are accessible here. You know, find some information on the engine, uh, maybe look inside, and, and even do a bit of a configurator thing again. So I can, I can change the color of the car. I can uh, go for the tinted windows if I want. And again, it's about engaging people, making them stay on your website, making them want to actually buy your product. Um, here's another example. I mean, you've all seen this kind of template before, the nice banded template with these you know, big pictures in, in the top of the screen, except you know, this isn't actually just an image. It's, it's, it's a 3D model that I can, I can zoom in and rotate um, and, and, and you know, do, do lots of stuff with. And I'll come back to that one later. Uh, here's another example, penny skateboard. Do you want to sell a skateboard online? Um, well, what better way to actually give somebody a, a visual designer? So, you know, let's have a look. I think I'll have a, you know, a green deck, uh, maybe orange wheels. I think this wheel, I'll make it purple. Um, what color shall I have for trucks? Let's see if I do a red truck. Black bolts. Put a panel on the bottom. Um, I've always fancied a leopard skin skateboard. Um, and then I can actually try it. So I can, I can use my arrow keys here to drive the skateboard around the screen. And of course, once I've designed my skateboard and taken it for a drive, I can buy it and get it sent to me in the mail. Okay, so those are some simple 
examples of why we're talking about 3D, why I think 3D is cool. Um, you know, and the other thing about 3D on the web is, as I mentioned before, it's only just become possible within the last two years, suddenly every major browser and every major mobile operating system supports WebGL natively. And WebGL is the base language of 3D on the web. Um, so that because they support WebGL natively, they support 3D natively. You don't have to anymore have a huge plugin that someone has to download to see your content. And I don't know about you guys, but when I see a plugin, I just leave the website. I don't want to download something that someone else is giving to me. Um, you know, and, and if you put it on the website now, because every browser supports it, you know that they can actually see it. Your customers can actually see this content, which in the past, when it was like only Chrome was supporting WebGL, you didn't know that someone wasn't going to come to your website with Internet Explorer and just see a blank screen. And I want to show you how simple it is as well. Um, the tools I'm going to show you today, a lot of them, as I mentioned, a lot of them have APIs, and you can get really deep down with the APIs. But at the base level, you don't have to do any coding at all. Um, very, very simple things like iframe embedding, using simple visual editors to, to get your 3D content on a website. And to prove that, I've kind of set myself a challenge. So I'm pretending that I work for a, a VR goggle startup. And my company has designed these really cool kind of steampunk look, look VR goggles. And my boss has told me that I've got to get a 3D model of the VR goggles onto their website as quickly as possible because you know, we're having a funding uh, round tomorrow and we want to make sure our investors can see the actual product. Uh, in actual fact, this is a model I, I downloaded from TurboSquid, which is a site where you can buy 3D content, but you know, we'll just pretend it's a proper design for purposes of this presentation. And I'm going to talk you through eight different tools. Some of them I'll go into more detail than others, just to give you an idea of the range of tools that are available to you, from the very simple to the very advanced. I've only got 45 minutes, so it's obviously going to be a flying overview. So what I'm hoping is to give you some pointers for things you can go and play with on your own uh, when you go home. Um, so you have these eight different tools. And you know, just in the interest of fairness, because I'm not talking about programming today, if you want to do JavaScript, then take a look at something like 3.js, Babylon.js. They're really good JavaScript APIs that bring the, web, the, the, the raw WebGL to a higher level of, of abstraction, which makes it a lot easier for you. Um, if you really want to do it the hard way, then yeah, sure, learn to program WebGL. I have every respect for someone who's taken the time to learn WebGL. And being a low-level language, you can do things in WebGL you can't do in any other way. But you know, I've been to these conferences before, and there's always some guy giving a WebGL presentation telling you how easy it is. And I'm sitting there in the audience going, Oh my god, that is a nightmare. And now you don't need to. You don't even need to know what WebGL is in order to get 3D on your website. You just need to know that the browser supports it. And I'm going to show you the different tools. I kind of developed this little top trumpsy um, presentation style where I talk about, I'll just explain the categories. So ease of use is basically how quickly can I get a model on my website. Model import is, does it do a good job of importing the geometry? Materials import. Um, the materials are things like you know this shiny red and the silver. You know when I import the model and display it on my website, do the materials look like they did in the original model, or, or do I have to do a lot of editing to make that work? Um, you know documentation. That's important when you get started. You know does it have good documentation? Can I add annotations? So can I add buttons and things in the model that people can click on to get a more immersive experience? Integration normally uses an API. That's you know if I do something in the model, click on an object. Can I make something change somewhere else in the DOM? Or if I, if I make a change somewhere else in the DOM, can the viewer detect that and change its state in response? Um, file formats, nearly all of these viewers support FBX and OBJ, or they all do support FBX and OBJ by default. But you know, sometimes you want to use some other um, file formats as well. So that can be important depending what kind of models you're trying to display. Customizability I define as being able to tweak the viewer, change its behavior without doing any programming. Um, and the API is like, how comprehensive is the API? How much fine control do I get? And then finally, I showed a pricing. So all of them have a free or tri trial tier I'll show you today. And most of them have multiple tiers for a professional level. And I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what the base professional tier is. And the reason you'll normally go professional is that when you take the free tier, 
the viewer on your website gets branded with the, the, the viewers, um, you know, the company you made the viewer, and you don't really want to advertise someone else's product on your website. So it's worth paying that extra money to, you know, not advertise somebody else's product. So Sketchfab, I'm just going to do a quick demo of this. And um, unfortunately, when I logged in Sketchfab this morning, I was going to show you the actual live process of uploading a model and show you how quick it was. Uh, but unfortunately, they put up this news item to say that actually it's not quick at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to show you the model. Trust me, it would have taken like less than a minute to import the model. And I have one that I prepared earlier. So I'll just click on that. And this is where I get really scared about the internet connection speed. So basically, I uploaded the model, didn't do anything else to it at all, and, and this is what I get. So Sketchfab, by the way, is um, it's a community site where people can share the 3D models that they've created. Um, so actually, there's a lot of content there you can download yourself. But because people are sharing, you know, they, they want to be able to actually you know, see the models and interact with them. So it's a really basic 3D viewer. And, and you know, what I'd say straight away with this raw import is, you know, this is supposed to be leather, and this is supposed to be metal, but actually that kind of just looks like cheap plastic. So there's something gone wrong here with the import. It hasn't perfectly imported the materials. But fortunately, I, I do have some settings, so I, I can go to the 3D settings. And this is a fairly typical operation is, you know, the question is, is how much do you get for free and how much do you have to tweak it to make it look perfect? And, and my theme as I've been researching this is how close to perfect can I be with these different tools without having to do anything at all? Um, so I, I can actually sort of go into the, the, the settings here. I can change the scene, some lighting. I want to change some materials. And, and what I can do here, for example, if I go for the casing, which has been outlined in magenta here, I can just change the, the specular color here to, to make it a more matte. And, and you see if I actually zoom in on this now, I'm not sure how well this displays on that projector, but you should be able to see that there's actually some texture there now. Looks a little bit more like leather. And, and I can do that for you know, everything on, on that model. I can tweak it as much as I like. And, and here is that model on my startup website. We're called Steam VR. We're probably going to get sued by Valve for using that name. Um, and this is, this is the viewer. And, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of OK. I've changed the lever, so it, it kind of looks not too bad. The metal, it doesn't look like I really want it to display. But, you know, it's a 3D model, and that would have taken me five minutes. This is an iframe in bed, by the way. You know, probably 10 minutes, including the translation process. Uh, I have these little annotations that Sketchfab gives you for free as well, which I can either click on directly or, or just scan through here. So a little bit of interactivity. So that, that ain't bad for something cheap and cheerful that you, know, you can get stuff on your website so quickly. So that's your baseline. That's Sketchfab. And now I'm just going to go through, uh, in roughly order of increasing complexity, um, some viewers. So the next one I want to show you is Clara.io. Now, Clara advertises itself not as a viewing platform, but as a full modeling, animation, and rendering engine. And it's purely web-based. Uh, and what I like about this is, by default, the materials look a lot nicer than they do in Sketchfab. Um, so I'm just going to go over to, uh, to Clara.io and, and show you that now. So let's go to Clara. And again, I've, I've pre-uploaded the model because I didn't want you to have to just sit and watch a progress bar for the entire meeting, for the entire presentation. Uh, but if anyone have, have, have used any of the kind of 3D modeling products like 3ds Max or Maya or something like that, you'll recognize this kind of format. This is a really, really complex modeling application that gives you full control of the model. You can create a complete new model from scratch if you want. I don't care about all of that. I just want to upload my model and then get it to view on a web page. So again, I have one I prepared earlier, which is the same web page. I'm going to show you the same web page again and again and again uh, with different models. But what I would say now is looking at this Clara model is um, the metal here, I mean, look how beautifully rendered that is. Really, really nice rendering. Um, the, the lever actually is still not perfect. It kind of now looks like expensive plastic instead of cheap plastic. So it looks like, I don't know, a, an Audi rather than a Volkswagen dashboard, perhaps. So that's Clara. Um, so go for that one. If you, if you actually want to create your own models, it's probably a good one to play with just because it's free and it's purely web-based. Then we have Marmoset. And Marmoset Toolbag 2 is a product. And 
This is the only desktop product I'm going to show you. So this price here is, is for a perpetual license. Um, it's not very easy to use because it uses a kind of different rendering style than nearly all the other viewers. It uses phys physics-based uh, rendering, which means that the materials are defined in a very different way. Uh, but the good thing about that is that you can create some absolutely beautiful renderings. So let me just find where's the mom, has it gone? There we go. So, so they have a gallery where they show off some of the, uh, some of the different models that people have made. And here's the fish. So I'll just click on this fish and actually I just realized I've not tried this web page on Firefox before so now I'm scared. Bit of a slow internet connection here. Um, it's kind of weird, I mean, you know, I'm just talking now to, so you don't get so bored, but people really like to upload weapons for some reason. I don't know why that is. If you go down here, there's guns and tanks and it's... But here's a fish, you know. I think a fish is better than a gun. Um, and I just want to kind of zoom in on this. And you start to see as I zoom in, I mean, the texture on this is incredible. The, the way it's reflecting the light and the granularity of the texture. It takes a lot of time. I mean, the thing with Marmoset, is that you have to spend a huge amount of time on these materials to make it look like this, but it's probably best in class for rendering when you do. Uh, I think one of the downsides is that it is just a 3D image. Um, you, don't get, you don't get any API at all to add interactivity, so it's purely just making things look beautiful in 3D on your website. You know, here's another example here, um, another non-military example. Um, you know, look at the reflections on, on the windows. You know, I, I go in on the windshield and you can even see the, the, the mud splattered on it. Um, you know, go into the thing and the guy's got his laptop open. Not sure what he's playing. Um, so that's Marmoset. And this is slightly different because it's a desktop engine. Uh, I'll just quickly show you how it looks. Um, again, I won't show you the importing process. I'll just, uh, I'll just open one that I prepared earlier. And that is this one. Okay, so something strange has happened here. And you'll, you'll see this in a few of the viewers. The model is loaded perfectly, so it's obviously goggles, but there is kind of, kind of grey-brown colour. Um, and what's happened is the materials have been imported, you can see them up here, but it hasn't applied the textures. The, the previous models that I, I, I showed you, it automatically added the textures. Uh, and by the way, just so you, you understand the, how these files are constructed, um, they, they look like this. I have this FBX file which defines the, the model geometry, the mesh, and the materials. But then the materials reference textures, and the textures are separate uh, JPEGs, uh, which you see here. Uh, and so what I actually have to do here, whereas the other models, the other modeling software, I automatically added those textures when I imported them. With this one, I actually have to edit them. So I actually have to click on each of these materials and go to my folder with the materials in and select the texture and then add it and you, and you see here straight away that I've, I've kind of got some, you know, the leather texture is there and I can just do the glass one as well quickly. Um, where's the glass? There we go. And so you have to spend more time and even when I apply these basic textures there's a huge amount of of other information I really need to add by hand. It doesn't do a good job of importing the standard textures. So I have to do a lot of work, but that work, if you're into the best image possible, is, is, is worth the effort. Um, okay, moving quickly on. Clever, you saw a demo of that before. Um, that was the, the little car configurator thing. So I'm just gonna go to my Clever account and Where's my accounts? There we go. And open it up. And again, I've got a preloaded model. And I'll just kind of show you the concept of Clever because it's a little bit different. Um, the thing with Clever actually is, um, the thing it's great for is just customizability. It's also quite good for file format support. They support a limited number of formats, but they provide plugins to popular modeling software like SketchUp and Rhino and Revit and 3ds Max and stuff like that. So you can import the models more easily. But the amount of stuff you can do without an API is, is really incredible, and that's, what, and that's why I've included it in this presentation. Okay, so let's just open up one I prepared earlier. And again, this one applies the textures automatically. So I kind of have 
the goggles in here and I can zoom in and, and, and the textures actually look quite nice. Um, so I don't have to do a lot of editing. Here's an artifact that you have to watch out for. Um, this material was actually defined as a single-sided material. Some of the other editors, you know, you can see here it's solid, whereas on this side you can see through it. And if I actually um, kind of rotate that, look, oh, it's see-through. Oh, it's solid. Isn't that magic? Um, you have to go through in some cases and just tweak some of the materials and tell it you should be displaying two-sided, not single-sided. Uh, and that's a relatively easy job to do. Um, but the beauty of Clever is it has this concept of, of adding buttons and panels. And a 2D panel just kind of sits at the front of the screen and doesn't do, doesn't do anything when you rotate the view. So what more interesting is, is, for example, this 3D panel, which I can insert here. And it brings up a little panel editor. And I'm just going to take the default stuff from this. And when I bring this in, I, I now have a three-dimensional panel. And, and it kind of gets interesting because I can do things like I can set the angles which this panel is visible at. So if I reduce the number of angles, hey, I can't see the panel, but then I, I can use this, this little rotation gizmo here. And, and as I rotate it back into view, it appears. But of course, if I, if I move my camera around, it disappears again. And it also has a concept of steps. So this panel is, is visible in this step. If I were to rotate this step around completely, there is no panel. I can choose which of the steps the panels appear in. And by adding these elements all through the UI, and I can link it up so you know this button goes to this step, and you know this step contains these UI elements. Uh, there is an API as well, but you know, all of that I can do purely through the user interface. Uh, and when I do, I actually had a bit of fun with my um, when I found, oh, I forgot to show you the, the marmers are on this. I'll do that in a second. Um, I had a bit of fun when I created this particular model because I, I did make a mini presentation. Um, so there's several ways you can interact. You can obviously just zoom and pan and rotate yourself. I've added some buttons, and the buttons do the same actions as this menu here. So, you know, if I click here, stop moving, you know, you get a little bit of information about the, the lever, or I, I can just go up here instead. You know, it's infinitely adjustable because it has a buckle. Um, and you can also do really simply configurators as well. So you have these colorized actions, which again is purely through the UI. Um, so do I want to look at my VR world through rose tinted spectacles, or gold tinted, or green, or silver? Uh, and you know, how does that look when I, I look around? Do, you know, which, which, which version of my goggles do I want to buy? Um, really easy to do, no API at all. There is an API, so you can actually automate this model from other parts of your web page. It's fairly rudimentary. It's about kind of actually you know, starting one of these actions in process. But uh, it's, uh, if you don't want to do coding, this is, this is definitely the one for you. Uh, oh, and I was going to show you the Marmoset, which I missed, didn't I? So just go back to the Marmoset viewer. So this one's self-hosted, um, rather than being an iframe of something which is hosted on a on, on the, the vendor's website because Marmoset's a desktop product. Uh, and I would say this is kind of, this is the default materials. I didn't make any changes. And you can see that it, it already, the metals already look pretty nice. Um, you know, things looking for in a default settings, how do materials look? You know, the, the default kind of viewing scene, how, how bright is it? How easy is it to manipulate it without making any changes? Um, so that's Marmoset. Okay, after Clever. So now we move on to the gaming engines. OK, good, plenty of time. Um, and you already saw this. You saw this example. Um, this is the Seymour example. If you go to the Play Canvas website, it's one of their showcase examples. And this is a full-blown JavaScript gaming engine. You, know, you can embed it in a web page, as you saw. Potentially, you can interact with other DOM elements with it. Um, the good thing is it does have a basic 3D model viewer template. So if you want to use this, you can get started without any coding at all. But really, the reason you would use something like Play Canvas is that you want to create a rich, interactive 3D experience or a game. Um, you know, and you are then starting to use its API, which is very extensive. It's like, like any gaming API. It's got everything, collision detection, physics, you know, camera movement, you, know, you name it. It's got it, standard uh, engine kind of stuff. Uh, you know, the downside is you have to code. So in terms of using code, you can't like, add annotations at all. Um, it's not so easy to use because it is based around really being a, you know, a games engine. And the file support, format support, it only supports three different files. I think it's uh, FBX, OBJ, and, and the Collada DAE format. Um, but it's quite cheap at the professional level. So let's just quickly, actually, I'll first of all go to the 
play canvas editor okay and I'll go to my raw upload again by the way this is really great if you're collaborating with people remote as well it has full sort of collaboration functionality around the, the thing that you're developing so basically you you select a, a 3d viewer template from its list of templates you import your model and when the model appears there it is oops you get something that looks like this which is again it's not imported my textures so then i have to go through and i think you know the drill by now i have to in this case it's called diffuse and i want to add to the casing i want to add leather it's kind of nice that when i i sort of select these things um it does whoops it does actually highlight where I can drag and drop, which is quite, quite nice on the user interface. So, you know, if it turns orange, just try, try and release a mouse and see what happens. Um, and, and, you know, you're kind of starting to build up the model there. And again, you, know, you can see it has lots of things you can change, things like opacity and specular reflections and all of those things. Um, and that's, this is purely the UI. I'm not going to cover the API at all. Um, and when we finish with that, we get this and again just to reiterate if you go for the professional versions you can change the branding that appears uh, and again this isn't bad uh, I'm not using the API so I haven't been able to do any customizations but you know it is infinitely customizable once you start using the gaming engine API the graphics are probably equivalent to the um, the clever demo that I showed you um, and this is interesting because you don't have to host this on their server you can download the whole presentation all of their javascript files and completely self-host so you can have everything hosted on your own server um, and that's the same actually for the next gaming engine that i'll show you which is called goo so goo create is i guess a competitor for play canvas again it's javascript i found it a little bit harder to use than play canvas it seems to be one of these uis where you change a value and then you kind of have to click somewhere else on the screen to make the value take um, but everything else was kind of pretty similar. File format support was FBX, OBJ, and I think this one was 3DS rather than DAE. Um, again, a very comprehensive API. It is more expensive than, than Play Canvas, so you have to decide if it's worth the extra money. Because it's yet another gaming engine, I'm not going to show you the editor, um, but I'll just show you the result. And again, this is using the default kind of 3D viewer template. And, and this again is one you can self-host if you so wish. So in this case, I did go pro and I actually removed the branding from that loading screen. Uh, and they have a slightly interesting kind of light box they put around this, which maybe for the goggles isn't perfect. I could really do with another add in some extra lighting to make it a bit, a bit brighter. But the, the metals actually come out quite nice. They, they kind of got a nice little sheen to them. And again, this is all the default materials. No, no editing except for dragging the textures onto the materials. You know, I can kind of try and <coughs> hoe them in a little bit and you can see uh, probably doesn't show very well on the projector but the leather looks kind of nice oh I'm whizzing through this I'm gonna have to slow down or else you guys are gonna have a break unity um, I had to show unity because if you talk about game engines everybody knows unity hands up here anyone who has not heard of unity good okay um, the good thing about Unity is the documentation is incredible. Um, it's a very mature product. It has really comprehensive documentation, really great tutorials. Because it's got such a huge user base, if you have a question, it's almost guaranteed that someone else has had that question and they've asked it and it's been answered online. So you have this wealth of information. Compared to Goo and Play Canvas, a, a much newer product, the documentation I found was you know they're making changes quickly so a lot of their documentation is is out of date already um, most of the time when you have a question which isn't answered by the docs you actually have to ask it and wait for one of their support guys to answer rather than just being able to, to google for it because it's just a much smaller user base at the moment the downside of unity is 
its WebGL viewer is in preview mode and it's an inscriptum translation of their plugin. You know, the, the, the default way, their recommended way of having 3D on a web with Unity is you have to download this monstrous Unity plugin and, and they have this WebGL thing. But because it's an inscriptum, you know, machine translation into JavaScript, it's a huge download and it really slows down the loading time. Uh, it's also a problem if you're not into Windows that the, all the scripting is C sharp. Uh, it uses mono on the Mac. Um, but if you want to get into, into games engines, start with Unity because all the con you know, it has great documentation and all the concepts are the same. They just apply across to other gaming engines, you know, physics, interactions, hit counts, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so let's go to the Unity demo. And you see it's, you can already see it's quite slow. And here's an interesting thing as well. Um, I, I was actually reading an interesting article about this. So Unity, when you have the free version, the personal edition, you're legally, a, a, you're legally required to include a Made With Unity logo. Um, whereas if you buy the professional version, you're allowed to remove that logo, which means that all the amateur games developers who are producing really bad games are all advertising Unity. So a lot of people out there actually think Unity is a really bad gaming engine because the stuff that advertises Unity almost by definition is the, the unprofessional stuff. Um, but actually it's really good, so I just want to kind of mention that just to dispel the myth if you like. But this is their default template and I had to use code for this. Um, I found some code that I could copy and paste from someone's blog, but I did have to use some code just to get this simple kind of viewer interaction, which just lets me zoom the camera in and out. And, and as you can see, the default scene is really, really ugly. Um, you know, I'd have to do a lot of customization if I wanted that to look nice. But it's Unity, it's a viewer, it's a great introduction to, to 3D gaming, if that's the way you want to go. Okay, so, oops. And finally, I have to remind you of a vested interest here. I work for Autodesk. This is Autodesk technology. So having said that, you will completely believe me when I say that when it comes to FBX and OBJ files, this viewer is crap. Um, it basically completely ignores the materials. And, and the beauty of this particular viewer is when it doesn't ignore the materials for other file formats, they're great. And you don't have to do any editing at all. Um, but it's literally what you get is what you get. There is no editing capability at all. And in the case of FBX and OBJ, I mean, Autodesk, you know, they, they, we write software that helps people design stuff. We do have a gaming side, but this viewer is really more on the, you know, architectural design, mechanical design, you know, basically designing something which isn't anything which isn't a game. Um, and that's where its strengths lie. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to, yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to show you this was its file format support. So, if you are dealing with professional file formats, um, you know, in a mechanical space, that might be SolidWorks or Katia or ProE or Autodesk Inventor or Fusion or, you know, things like Revit in the, the architectural space. It supports over 70 different file formats. And it comes in kind of two flavors, well, three different flavors. There's a free viewer where you can just quickly put something on to show your friend, which is leaves, leaves the stuff online for 30 days and then deletes it. There's a kind of collaboration tool called A360, which is $10 a month. Or, there it, or it, the viewer has also been productized into a standalone API, which is in beta at the moment, so it's free. Um, and it, it, because of that, it's a bit difficult to categorize because there's a load of stuff you can do with the different things, and they're all kind of different depending on which, which part of it you use. So let me just give you a demo. Um, and I will go to... Here we go, a house. And you'll see very shortly why, why this is different from the others. Uh, and it gives you a huge amount of interactive functionality which the others don't give you, you know, for free, basically. Uh, come on. Assuming my model hasn't expired. Oh, it does this sometimes. I'm going to have to close down my browser and start again. Um, one of my other games engines is is killing that, so, oops. Let me go back to Firefox and do that again. Should work this time. Ah. 
Ha, <laughs> that's better. Um, so this is a house, obviously. Um, and, you know, you get the usual kind of zoom, pan, rotate. Uh, but it kind of gets interesting when I want to, um, for example, take a section through the house. So now you see why, you know, Autodesk are a professional design company. Why, if you want to get something a bit more detailed on your website about some product you're manufacturing, perhaps, and you want your people using your website to have details of the manufacturing information, you know, you get things like this sectioning completely for free. Um, if I turn that off, you know, this particular model had some predefined views, so I can actually go in. For, this, this was actually from a product called Revit, the original file. Um, and yeah, you can go and see different parts of the house. i uh, give you a, another example on that. Um, where are we? show you another one which is a, a little this is a little demo of the API now which is a, a little bit different um, there you go just load this suspension model just to give you some ideas of some of the other things you can do with this this is a mechanical model now it's a suspension assembly for a car here it comes and there it's loaded. And, and, you know, I didn't want to demonstrate with this for house because it will give you the wrong impression. But as, as a mechanic, you kind of like to take things apart and see how they're constructed. So, so it gives you that. You can, you can explode the model. You shouldn't really be exploding houses. Um, what else can we do? I can search for models. So, you know, because this was translated from a professional design file, it has data embedded in the model. So, for example, if I want to see all the springs in the model, I can query the springs. Uh, if I want to look at the wheels, I can just search for wheels and it, it shows them. Uh, you know, I can click on this wheel and I can isolate it and it kind of grays out everything else and shows that in context. Uh, when I select that, I can show all the original design information about that, part numbers, tolerances, materials it's made from, manufacturing information. Um, you know, which if you need that kind of thing, it's worth, worth knowing. If you just want to display a model which looks cool, you'd probably use one of the other tools. But if you want to go into this kind of depth, if you're actually displaying manufacturing information, then you know, this is, a, this is a, a great little tool. You see here we have the model structure where you can click on different things. So a very different um, tool set just to complete the picture. And, and that's it. That is the sum of all the, the viewers that I wanted to show you today. Uh, hopefully, well, hopefully I achieve my goals, which is to make you realize that 3D is cool, honest, um, and it's easy. Uh, in terms of what you should get started with, it kind of depends what you want to do. If you just want cheap and cheerful, go for Sketchfab. It's definitely the easiest to use, but as you saw, the materials are probably the worst in terms of the way they render on the website. If you want to do stuff without an API and you want to create those really nice interactive presentations, take a look at Clever. Uh, it's actually the only tool I'm aware of that does that kind of stuff. Uh, it used to have a competitor called, or it's almost a competitor called Verald, but they've been acquired by Box.com, so they've, they've closed themselves now to new users. If you're looking for files format support which isn't OBJ or FBX, then go with the Autodesk viewer. If you want to integrate with the rest of your website, so you know, your viewer elements are interacting with the rest of your DOM, then Autodesk or one of the gaming engines, Goo or Play Canvas. And for APIs, you go with the, the gaming engine for the ultimate API customizability. Unity, if, you, if, you, if you're just starting to learn, Goo or Play Canvas, if you really want that native JavaScript experience. And then finally, some quick tips. Um, just because we've got time. Size matters. Just like if you have a monstrous high resolution image on a 2D website, if you have a monstrously detailed 3D model on your 3D enabled website, it's going to load slow. It will quite likely crash a mobile operating system browser where there's limited memory. So you do have to think about optimizing for load performance. Being 3D exacerbates a problem over anything you've seen with, with 2D content being, being big and bloated. Um, as I mentioned before, go professional, pay a little bit of money if you want to remove the branding, uh, the, 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 tool, the tool vendor's branding from your website. If you're looking for file formats, for everything except Autodesk, 
look for the FBX format because nearly all of the viewers, when you read their, um, in, where their documentation, they'll say FBX is the best. It's the one that they put the most effort into. And in terms of the gaming engines, FBX contains meshes and materials. It can also include rigging and animations. So they, some of those tools can also import animations for you as well. And then finally, where do you get the models? So if you want to start creating them yourself, I mean, really our story here is the hard part of 3D modeling and putting 3D models on the web should be the 3D modeling part. It should be the creative process of getting stuff on your website. It shouldn't, sorry, it should be the creative process of actually making the model. A bit about getting it on your website should be easy, which it is now becoming. But if you want to create something, try Clara.io, which I showed you. It is a free version and it's completely web-based. Um, Play Canvas and Goo have some modeling functionality as well. Um, but it's probably a bit harder to get at because of the gaming engine aspect of it. Autodesk have some software, their 1, 2, 3D range is simple modeling software, or Fusion 360 is a free professional mechanical design application. Or if you're looking for generic content, uh, of which there is a lot, you can go to places like TurboSquid or Sketchfab and, and, and buy it or download it for free, or engage in the community and, and ask someone to actually make what you need. Or if, you, if you're actually displaying things that somebody else's design, most manufacturers have these models because they designed it, they originally created a model in their software, and they'll usually have that somewhere on their website. Or if you ask them nicely, they will, they will give you a version of the model which you can use to generate this, this, kind, of, uh, this kind of geometry. OK, so thank you. Questions? So for, uh, all the objects you show are typical 3D objects. What about things scanned by, for example, Google Tango projects or all these materials that they are mixed of the 3D and photos on that? Do you have any suggestions about this kind of scans? So you're, you're asking rather than a model that someone has designed, more something that someone scanned. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's various ways that people can scan. One is the laser scanner. Um, but another way that people do it is there are quite a few web services now where you can take pictures of an object from multiple angles and you, you upload it to a web service. Autodesk has one, it's called uh, Recap360. Microsoft had one called Photosynth. Uh, and basically you upload the photos and it uses a kind of feature recognition in the photos to generate a textured 3D mesh. And, and a typical output for that will be an OBJ file. Um, and yeah, all of these viewers could display something like that. You've just got the extra step of converting the scan, you know, actually taking the scan in the first place. But it's perfectly doable, yeah. Any other questions? So the question was, is there any kind of automatic optimization, like level of detail and stuff? And, and I would say, but for the gaming engines, yes. Although, you, you know, you have to do a lot of your own work to make it perfect. Um, for some of the other viewers, mm, I'm going to say no. <laughs> Sorry? OK, so blend swap is a recommendation for 3D content. Great, thank you. Any other questions before we wrap it up? Otherwise, you know, I'm over at the sponsors table over there. You can come and see me this afternoon or tomorrow. No? Oh, one more. Do they have a graceful fallback option if a mobile? That's really up for you. Um, you know, this is a very simple piece of JavaScript code you can, you can just put in there to detect the capabilities of a browser. You really just need to, uh, they, they, they do normally, they do display some kind of message, but you'd probably want to pretty up that message yourself. Okay, so thank you everybody. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference.